let's let's stay on the topic. Mm-hmm. If you met uh, a young uh, someone as young as you are who wants to start like a, a startup while in college, and I'm, I'm speaking generally now, not just hardware. Mm-hmm. What are some what 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 are some of the advice that you would want to give to them? Like how to <laughs> continue your undergrad degree while mm-hmm. launch, launching a startup, yeah. and uh, do they need to take some time off? Do they need mm-hmm. to what, what do they need to do? Right. Um, I gave a talk at um, a summer entrepreneurship session last summer to a, a burgeoning group room full of excited and eager students mm-hmm. ready to jump into entrepreneurship. Some of them were freshmen, some of them were sophomores, some of them were seniors, some were grad students. And so I had to identify what were some of the key pieces of advice for people at different paths in their career, in their collegiate career. And I came down to a sort of a few that sort of brought everything together. I think the first thing is knock on every door, is what I said, right? There's hundreds of opportunities at the at the university level and the ecosystems around to find advice to find mentorship, to find support, to find funding. And a key job, sort of being a collegiate entrepreneur, is utilizing these resources, engaging and learning. Mm -hmm. And that's my second biggest thing, learning and growing, keeping a very, very open mind towards the fact that you will be learning and you should be learning, and you're going to learn a lot of new things that you didn't know about before. And that's something key towards starting a business, right? Having that capacity and curiosity to learn. And if you keep knocking on those doors and you keep learning, you'll be surprised to find the welcoming arms that help you and guide you along this path. Especially at a collegiate you know, level, if you're trying to develop a startup, one thing you mentioned is sort of how do you do that with school? How do you balance a startup in school? And for me, a lot of that comes down to ruthless prioritization and balance. Mm-hmm. Finding out how you balance sort of what you want to do in your life and prioritizing it's easy often to overcommit to things. So prioritize what is it that you want to do. A lot of times you don't know, and that's okay. So choose then the top three or five things from your list and then commit to them, right? Part of the whole startup is, I'm sure you know, is you got to commit to it, you know, 100%, 110%. Yeah. And so if you can do that while balancing your school, great. Just make sure you're not overcommitting to other things as well. And so the way you do this is just by ruthless prioritization and then balancing all the sorts of things you want to do in your life. The other big aspect of sort of university entrepreneurship is you have the community, the people here to support you, to help you, to find co-founders, you know, other people to join your team. Utilize that. It's one of the, in my opinion, the best times to grow a team Mm because you're at college, you meet like people. You don't have to pay full-time salaries to people. Yeah, It's fantastic utilize that resource. And so when I was speaking in that room to all the students, I was like, this is a community. You have a room full of like-minded people, engage. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to make a startup, this is a place to start. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things I'd say to someone trying to start a startup in college. Yes, obviously some of the best relationships you're gonna build will be built in college. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's incredible for someone who has been out of college uh, for a while and you know has been in, in the inter- entrepreneurship world for a few years now. I know, I know that for sure. That <laughs> sure. Out, once you get out of college, you're basically on your own. You, <laughs> right. you know, so yes, yes, yes. It's easy to be not easy. I mean, I don't mean easy, but like right. it's, it's better to be a 19 year old <laughs> and find other 19 year olds that think like you or want to build a company like you and are, are, are motivated also. Speaking of uh, rootless planning and rootless prioritization. From experience, I know that that's not born out of motivation. Mm. It's not born out of um, even discipline. I mean, mm. discipline plays a huge role. It's born out of a a burning desire and a burning um, a burning need. So, so for example, say say you had someone who had cancer, for example. Mm. I go, you know, I'm not saying. <laughs> you say 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 you had someone who had cancer, and you were close to the forefront of cancer research, mm-hmm. for example. Mm-hmm you would probably be able to put a lot of energy into trying to find a cure for that person. Right. Uh, or, uh, your research will be, you'll be doing so much work and right. you'll, be, you'll be motivated to do it. And say you have two or three of those things, then right. it's just easy to, to figure out, okay, I'm going to do just two, three things, two or three things, even though one of them is enough to take all of my time. Right. Right. right? So, so that's, that's something to take into consideration is, you know, like I said, it's, it's easier to build something around something that's personal to you. No, yeah. Right. So if you're if you're in college and you're trying to build a startup, 
you know, mm. there's, there's probably a problem that that you, you have. Yeah. And it's easier to try to solve that problem while going to college because then you'll be able to do both. That's but if you're true. just like, ah, I need to make a million dollars or something. Right. Uh, you're probably not going to go that far. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It, it connects to what you were talking about earlier, right? You're saying that, yeah. you know, you have to be very, very passionate about the problem you're solving and that keeps you going through the hard times or right? yeah. the low times. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You, you got to have that chip on your shoulder, that that burning block on you, right? Keeps you pushing forward. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a key aspect of where ruthless prioritization comes in, right? You're mm -hmm. just saying, this is something I'm super passionate about. This is something I want to do. I have to do it. Right? Yeah. It's a necessity. Have to. Yeah. That's a key word. I have to. If you find something that you have to do, then right. you're in the sweet spot exactly. right there. Exactly. Right. Because yeah. then you can convince anyone to join you, right? If you yeah. have to do it, you know it fundamentally, right? That's, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what's funny mm -hmm. is uh, I have actually backed like, uh, like founders or startups, like uh, just purely off of uh, this person is really passionate about. I mean, obviously they are skilled, right. they're they are talented, they they have the right team, they have all kinds of things in you know, around them. But most importantly, they're really passionate about this thing. Yeah, <laughs> which means yeah. you're not gonna. They're gonna be like a freight train. Yeah. They'll run through you if you stand exactly. in their way, right? Exactly. So that's that's yeah. that's very right. important. That's that's pretty yeah. cool. Absolutely. Um, I mean, even if the rails of the track are gone, that freight train will continue. Will continue forward. to go forward. Right. That's, that's that's how I see it. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible to think about. All right, let's, uh, let's let's move on. So this year, I we actually uh, talked at uh, TechCrunch startup uh, battlefield, the stage. Um, you were there. What was the experience like? How? Just walk me through it briefly. How do you get sure. into uh, TechCrunch Startup Battlefield, and yeah. what was the experience like? That's a great question. Um, so part of the nature of our startup is we're bootstrapped, right? We've won. We've applied to hundreds of competitions. We're thankful and grateful to have won. You know, several very large national ones, pitch competitions, innovation competitions. Um, we've won a lot of local ones, and that's been great. It's been giving us the funding to keep on going. And so, you know, as a company, we're really grateful to have been supported by so many, so we apply to them, right? We engage and utilize these opportunities, like I spoke about earlier. As a collegiate student, you have to utilize them. TechCrunch was an opportunity that came to our attention, and I heard about this a few years ago, and I've always wanted to go and attend. And so I applied, you know, about May of sort of last year. This is one of the lengthiest applications I've ever gone through. Um, Hmm. It's it's not difficult, but it's very lengthy and time consuming. And so applying through it, you know, I've I've applied to a couple hundred applications and competitions. It took a lot of reflection on terms of what was required. And I didn't really think we had a great chance of getting in. It's a very prestigious competition. There's, you know, ten thousand applicants every year. And so getting that email in August was sort of a shock. Um, we didn't expect we would get in. Um, it was pretty prestigious at the time. And we didn't really fathom sort of what was to come. Over the month that followed, we learned and they had master classes and sessions and teaching and workshops and we learned a lot and prepped our pitch and things like this. And so going from there to San Francisco to presenting to making a booth was an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. And the main reason we were going to San Francisco for Disrupt, TechCrunch Disrupt was two big things, was for networking and engaging and then visibility. Right, right. The people we were trying to meet were investors, right, helping us raise funding, um, connections to industry experts, founders, roboticists, um, news, press, as well as just interesting people, innovators, disruptors, as well as visibility, right, get our name out there and things like this. And from the course of TechCrunch over those three days, over those three nights, our team was very, very successful and very, very proud of them for what mm -hmm. we did and sort of a first time when we've been on such a global stage. And that was that was really exciting for our team, and we accomplished a lot of our goals, right? Meeting people, making connections, um, getting good visibility, pitching on stage, things like this. And so overall, TechCrunch was a great experience. I mean, of course, I got to meet people like you, which is awesome, which, is, <laughs> which led me here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I would, I'd definitely do it all over again. So sounds good. Uh, actually, I have a question about since you're bootstrap right now, right? But obviously. You want to raise funding, no? Right. Have you have you run into uh, issues with investors who are like, "Oh, you're still in school. Uh, you know, if you just dropped out and did this full time, it would be better." Right. Have you, have you run into that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I have. But for every investor that says you need to drop out of school, there's one who supports you and believes that you don't have to. Uh -huh. And so we have faced pushback from people, but we have also faced, you know, positive support. 
overwhelmingly though, the key issue is with hardware here. As you mm -hmm. know, hardware is a capex business, high capex business, mm -hmm. and so you have to raise a significant amount of money. And so with investors, you have to prove that you have the expertise mm -hmm. as well as time to really push through. And so yes, there's been difficulties with sort of getting people that believe in that, but what we talked about earlier, if you believe that you have to do it, I have found many people who believe in that as well. Yeah. And so I'm confident that there are people who don't want us to drop out of college and things like this. Yeah. The other side of things is what I talked about earlier. University gives us resources, facilities, labs, people. I'm not having to pay myself a full-time salary, mm -hmm. right? All of these are pros towards staying in university and building your startup, yeah. right? So there's a balancing act here. Yeah, I, yeah. as you were saying, I just realized something. A lot of startups failed in the first year and and uh, there's no guarantee that if you went out on your own, not you, but just generally speaking, the startup will survive two years exactly. that, you know, like, exactly. so. I mean, you started your, your startup during your PhD, correct? Towards the end, towards so I had the opportunity to finish and, okay. then, and, then, and then start it. Okay, fantastic. And I'm sure the university may have provided some sort of support, maybe that bridge in towards helping yeah. develop the startup. So yeah. That's fantastic. And I think that's partly part of the reason why I think that there is a boon towards staying in university and utilizing resources, so. I agree, I agree, especially for the fact that what you're building, like you said, is a high capex endeavor, right? So you you actually you actually have an advantage being there. Yeah, right. Absolutely. That's true. I, we re you reduce people costs a lot, and so uh -huh. you can just focus on the nature of building the product. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, your co-founders are also. Um, yeah. So I, I guess I didn't really touch on much on that, but um, coming to university was key towards building the team. And uh -huh. so I have two co-founders. Jimmy Mahon, my COO, and Krishnan Ram, my CTO, um, met both of them through, you know, coincidences. I think mm -hmm. that's some of how the best connections happen. One was my sweet mate. The other one I met through a friend, and they both developed and grew into some of the most effective, yeah. you know, leaders I've ever seen. And so now they're key towards helping our team, you know, run our operations, our supply chain, our management, yeah. um, our technical side development, these kinds of things. Yeah, I've met your co-founders, and it's weird. Jimmy's talkative like he likes to talk but your right. other co-founder is extremely shy <laughs> oh at least that was my impression of him like the cto let's just spend <laughs> it does he spend his entire time just building like robots right. or what what does he do he's he's definitely more shy than jimmy yeah um, he's grown a lot through our startup he's been able to become more comfortable speaking yeah. introverted i think when you met him also he was tired after pitching for a couple yeah, of days yeah, yeah. But you're right. He focuses on that technical aspect and is able to drive our engineer. I have no forward. problem with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, some days I just want to be an engineer. I'm an entrepreneur yeah. now most of the time, but right. some days I just want to build things and I don't oh, want yeah. to do any business related stuff. Oh, yeah. So you got it. I mean, I'm involved <laughs> in like we just had a design review last night, right? Yeah. I'm involved with every step of that process. I'd like to be a very technical CEO. Uh -huh. I like to be someone who knows the nitty gritty of what's going on with everything and yeah. contribute to it, make decisions and things like this. What are the names again? Uh, Jimmy and Krishnan. Krishnan. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Yep. Nice. All right. Uh, let's talk about something else. Uh, sure. Yesterday, actually, yesterday. <laughs> so uh, you and some founders, some other founders, spent some time hanging out with the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Yep. Uh, what was that about? It was a very last minute sort of event put together by Capital Factory. Mm -hmm. So I also work on another startup as well called Gazelle. And mm -hmm. so we work in the sustainability tech space. And so we were invited by Capital Factory, sort of last minute request to come present and pitch to Secretary Blinken. Um, he had sort of uh, reached out to Capital Factory just a few days prior. And so they sort of rushed and they selected us out of their couple thousand portfolio companies um, because it made sense for what Blinken was discussing. And so one of the things Blinken is focused, Secretary Blinken is focusing on is agricultural sustainability and food security. Mm -hmm. And so we had the opportunity, we were really grateful to pitch to Secretary Blinken, got to meet with them, take some photos, um, discuss a bit about how what we're doing aligns with some of his initiatives. I think overall it's just really exciting seeing like world leaders support the Austin innovation sy uh, system, um, seeing that when they come to Austin, that is a key thing that they recognize is important to the city. And so I think that's just really exciting seeing that. Yeah, I love that. I love to see that. Um, you get invited a lot for things like this by Capital Factory or what? Uh, occasionally. Um, this is definitely the most high profile event uh -huh. I've, I've sort of high profile individual I've met, which is fantastic. Um, 
definitely had the opportunity to meet other really exciting people as well. Mm. Capital Factory has been great for that. Um, other sort of entrepreneurship networks around Austin have been great as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think I have opportunities like this, right? I mean, this is a fantastic opportunity. Absolutely. And, and so I, I, uh, I'm just really grateful, I think, for the ecosystem around here. So yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good.